Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Yesterday we pushed a lot of pistons off rods and I got some rods that need to be finished. I got some rods that may be okay. And oh fell down. This rod here. Years ago, when I was checking clearances for stuff, had the father-in-law loosen up this end so it could be a test fit rod. Well, the one thing I hadn't done is set it up for 383 clearances. So last night we sat here, used something I forgot I had, did a little beam polishing here, practice, uh, got that. So now this is rigged up, this rod here is rigged up. So we can put the 383 pistons on there. And if this rod clears, yeah, I'm talking about getting the grinding those and get them clearanced. Now that's a stock bolt and everything, so but now if it clears in that, I'll know how much to I've got a little bit of a jig in mind to make that I can e either use the angle grinder or whatever and get them all the same. So I know I removed the exact same amount of metal off them. Um, so that's all we can do. Anyway, you guys just missed out on the hard part. <laughs> uh, yeah. And some guys attempts it beam polish here I mean they didn't finish it because they were on the rod so they beam polished them and this one's done the wrong way the grain goes that way instead of lengthwise like this it's supposed to but the sanding goes this way across which is a big no-no anyway we'll talk about that stuff later oh but believe it or not yeah you got that okay uh squirrel actually come out her driver's side window had quit working. Well, kind of. It would go up and come down slow. Well, after doing a little bit of work, uh, had to tear the door panel off. One of the window guide bars in the door came unbolted. Window fell out of the track, got out. So, yeah, talk about it. And then her door panel was really loose. Oh, it just a mess, but. Uh, Three weeks later, after buying said coil, we're going to put the coil in. Because number one keeps failing or giving her issues. And I see this coil is not as nice as the original one there. Because the original one has the numbers on it. This one has nothing. So, anyway, one, two, three three four so we're going to change out the coil on this thing didn't get any good news in the news either in the mail <sighs> it's hard to believe five six years ago we had this motor tore apart and i don't know what happened though to the follow-up videos i've had some people contact me and say hey where was the follow-up well it should have been there but i see it has completely disappeared from the playlist so not sure what happened there Anyway, Squirrel had to run off and take a co-worker to work, so she took my truck, so yeah, we got the unfluffy friendly car here to drive. Oh, we got Snowball yet there, sitting there. So, Dooley needs a brake line and brakes to re-bled. And yeah, but anyway. Alright. Look at who's here! And I should have been rolling the camera when I told her all well, your new coils in. What'd you do? I was like, ooh, it's shiny. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, uh, there's Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Yes, I know. I got white legs. Ah, blind, blind. Oh. oh my arms are tan. Yeah. <sighs> my stomach's even whiter. <laughs> Cat's picking on him. Oh, anyway, yeah, we got, uh, we're getting, she's getting her car worked on. Oh. oh, I know, and I even drove your truck. Yeah, my truck came back in one piece. I did a pretty nice parking job. Came back with more gas in than what it was left with, too. Thank goodness. Okay. She had to go give somebody a ride, so that give them a ride to work. <laughs> hey, 
Squirrel, what? how do you check your oil? With a clean stick. <laughs> Look at this, a squirrel putting oil in her own car. Maybe it will run correctly now. I hope so. Anyway. Hey, look at that! There goes some good old uh, chemicals out the back of that plane. Yeah. Isn't that chemicals? Yeah, a lot of people have figured it out. When a plane flies and it's burning no normal, it don't do that. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get it. Oh, there we go. There we got... Uh, Looks like the O2 sensors are shot. We got a P138, P132, P301, number one cylinder misfire. Here, see, you're going to have to look through to see what you're seeing. Oh, that part might be a little jumpy. Engine, and then P138 again. So, I'm just reading them off. So, we're going to go in and... Clear? Auto track with AC. Codes. We'll just see what. The... Uh. Excuse me. Okay. What do you see? I can see you. Yeah. So that's what we got. And before I start the car, we're going to go in and clear the codes. Oh, it's a little blurry, right there, Palmer? Yeah. Well. Okay. We'll go back up. Okay, no codes pressed. Ma'am, you may start your car now. Oh! <laughs> They're gonna get a little seasick from that one. Yeah, huh? Reach in, turn the key. You don't have to touch throttle. Just turn the key. But I have short arms. Hey, wow, it even sounds a little better already. Hey, it's amazing what it sounds like with, with good oil in it. Something's rattling. You not hear that? No. How do you not hear that? Oh, that? That's the exhaust. That it's never made that noise. Well, when Grandma had this car, that's... Why? It's running smoother. Here, take over the camera. Watch what you're doing. Oh, we don't want to make them seasick anymore? No. See with no codes present so far. That should be oh the O2 sensor. What does the O2 sensor do? Since <laughs> help brakes light stuff. I know that wasn't very good. Let's see. We'll go to data display. Your car's not shaking near as bad. I know. Look at my steering wheel's not moving. Yeah. You paying attention? You kind of got a weird angle on the camera there. Well, because then it, it makes it so they can read yeah. it. Okay. Somewhere. Let's see. <clears throat> can. There's O2 sensors. What is that noise? Do you hear the noise? What? Just don't turn into your sister. What? Every time she hears a noise, she thinks. I'm just saying, it's never made that noise before. Well, give me a minute to get to it, kid. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the O2 sensors are not switching. They're just dead. Very low activity, so we'll have to get some O2 sensors for this thing. Which... Yeah, they're not just... They're just... Hmm. Alright, we'll be right back. Oh, well, that's nice to have the kid's car done. She even cleaned it while she was here. She's like, whoa, that's nice to open up a car door and have it clean. Yeah. I also got the dipstick tube correctly adjusted. Since this was a complete full oil change, uh, 
I checked the level after filling it, and yeah, we didn't quite have it right. It was too far down in there, so. <laughs> or when she's checked it, she jammed it, but she's like, wow, well, my door shut's better, no rattles, and well, yeah, kid. Anyway, yeah, at the start, I was kind of talking about some rods here. I've got, uh, one, two, three, four, five. This is number six. I got six of these that were kind of done up. But like I said, the cross graining's the wrong way. These are salvageable. But I, sitting here doing what I did last night, I got to do that stuff outside. There's too much. Yeah, so. We had the vac and clean out everything up in here. But yeah, I'm thinking about breaking down my water. Break it down and uh, grinding on my new rods. Granted, it's not a whole lot to take off, but Give me a wrist spin again. So these are both now floaters. Oh, look at that. Anyway, now I can line these up. There's how much has to come off this rod. Once I get this in, they get that one in the motor. See, there you go. That's what I was hitting by. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's how much. And like I said, I gotta use this rod and put a couple of the pistons in. Um, myself. I would feel a little bit better getting the stroker rods, but I've got these. It's already balanced to these rods, so. And the machinist keeps swearing up and down. What little bit I take off isn't going to affect nothing, so. That's why I've got an idea for a jig to remove the exact same amount off every one. So. Yep. But anyway, yeah, so got this one rigged up to be the test. And I'll put her in, and if that clears, then I can get in there with a the feeler gauge, see how much it clears by. Because what I found in all the books and everything, they say this needs to be down to a 5 eighths, 5 eighths of a thickness. And that's what I've got it at. And uh, I would, this is just to get it going, but then I would polish that and take all the sharp edges off like I did. So I guess. But yeah. So we got that rigged up. Which then that means we'll get back on the 383. 383 will be rainy day stuff. Uh, we just tried jacking the Cadillac up and we didn't have very good luck with it. It slipped sliding around and the ground's just a little soft yet, so we'll mess with that tomorrow. Get it up in the air and then I can lay out the cardboard slide on or get the starter off, the torque rear bolts undone. And then start taking out the dozen or so training bolts. Because that's got the 4L60E, the newer training. I don't have the old school. So, and the more I tear apart, the more somebody's been in there. Either that motor's been out before and replaced, like I said, because there is no numbers on the block. So, that would have been a warranty job. So, it, yeah, the more I got, I've got stuff undone in the back, and you can see brackets are not put back in the proper place. Uh, the 
Yeah. So, whoever cha if somebody changed the motor, they got it running. That's all they did. They got it running. They got it usable. So. Anyway, I gotta go check on a 2008 Chevy that he thinks is stuck in four-wheel drive. You know, he's got the manual transfer case. He says when he turns the wheels, it's like the front end's locked up. But he says he don't have no 4x4 indicator and no service 4x4 has come on either. So, go home and get, go, yeah, go to his place and scan it and see what's up. So, man, the kid's like, wow, my car don't sit here and go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it does. It sounds a lot better. I should probably be able to spin the tires on it now. Hope not because her tires are bald, but we just looked up some tires. Looks like about 180 bucks to replace all her tires. <laughs> Nice. So they need to be replaced. Then get a front end alignment done. I know the car's been wrecked. It's not perfect, but need to see if we can get it at least aligned better. So it ain't eating the front tires. I mean, it drives straight down the road. You wouldn't think there's anything wrong with the alignment, but then again, those tires are. Oh crap. They said they put them on new when I got the car. They're six or seven years old, but the mileage when I got that car it had just over 125,000 miles. So yeah, they should have lasted longer than that. But anyway, so yeah, we cleaned up a lot of junk, broken pistons and crap yesterday and. Trying to get back on the motor build. And I guess, like I said, I got a jig in mind I'm going to make for my angle grinder that I can be able to go up and take take a majority off that and work it the rest of the way. I don't think I'm logged into Facebook. What the heck's going on with my phone? Yeah, I'm not logged in. Why is Facebook notifying me? Okay, that's weird. Anyway, uh, yeah. Now, uh, changing that coil, uh, you, you gotta remember to put the two back bolts in that coil. Because if you put it in, you try putting them on, uh, yeah. It was a tight fit. Buddy worked on it too, because all of a sudden, I don't know what happened to me. I started sweating and got almost sick to the stomach and yeah uh, and then I got my stomach to calm down and all of a sudden I started sweating again and but anyway I guess I'll get this uploaded and uh, finally got a kid out here now to get mama bear out here so we can fix her Cadillac get the oil changed to that and get her door window working again for her so Anyway, you guys all take care. Oh, the flies are terrible. And the skip's really, really crazy with the radio. Almost every channel that could be is coming across my radio for the last few days. So I know we got some weather coming yet. So the skip is rolling bad. Anyway, later.